To start things off, let's look at a split screen of all of the SpaceX Starship prototypes that we've seen fly so far. Starting with Starhopper in 2019, and then SN5 and 6 at the top in 2020, SpaceX began their in-flight testing of Starship hardware with basically cylinders that had a single Raptor engine on the bottom. Serial number 8, at the end of 2020, took off with three Raptor engines and was equipped with aero surfaces so that it would have a controlled descent and was planned to have a very nice soft landing like a cat. However, that's not exactly how it all went down. But before we get that far into what happened, let's just note that serial number 5, 6, and Starhopper all land at about one minute into their flight. Serial number 8 kept on accelerating because it had bigger plans. Now the frost on the outside of the Starship is a really good indicator of where the propellant is inside the tanks. The bottom smaller ring is where the liquid oxygen is stored, and the larger ring above that is where the liquid methane is stored. The three Raptor engines use a combination of supercooled methane and oxygen to provide such a powerful thrust that's able to propel the entire structure high up into the sky. Before the flight, many speculated that serial number eight would turn off all three engines at once and then keep coasting up to its apogee. Apogee meaning the highest point in the flight. But instead, the SpaceX team decided to turn off the engines one by one as less and less acceleration was needed as the flight progressed. Notice the motion of the engines as one turns off and the others maintain balance. And after it's off, it continues spitting out just a little bit of that propellant, which isn't being forced downwards at such high velocities, and starts coming back up into the engine bay, creating a fireball. Now this motion of the engines that we're seeing here, which is called thrust vector control, or TVC, also known as gimbling, is very important because it's what balances the vehicle keeping it facing upright. If you've ever tried to balance a stick standing upright on the end of your finger, just like they do in the circus, you probably know how difficult this can be. So the flight was powered by three engines for roughly the first minute and 40 seconds. For about 90 seconds after that, the two engines continued to accelerate the vehicle upwards. If your intuition tells you that two engines gives you less thrust than three engines, you would be right. But of course, there are other variables at play when it comes to overall change in velocity. One of which being the weight of the propellant. As you burn your propellant, your vehicle becomes lighter and lighter and is more easily accelerated to higher speeds with less energy. Another variable is that the atmosphere that the vehicle is traveling through gets thinner and thinner as it gets higher and higher in altitude. Just look at the engine exhaust getting wider and wider because of less and less ambient air pressure. So aside from two engines providing less thrust as the Starship gets higher in the sky, you can also notice that the Starship is now leaning to the side because of the offset thrust position. Three minutes and 13 seconds after liftoff, you can see the second Raptor engine cut off and the balance and thrust transfer to that last remaining lit Raptor engine, Raptor engine number 42. Now the Starship is still traveling upwards through the air, but isn't accelerating as much as it was before. In fact, it may already be decelerating and slowing down its upwards velocity. You can tell its speed is getting slower and slower because of how fast that venting exhaust is coming off of the body of the vehicle. On the top right, we're looking at a camera that's mounted on the side of the hull. It's looking straight down and showing one of the rear flaps and the Mexico-Texas coast on the Gulf of Mexico. Now Starship serial number 8 was equipped with cold gas nitrogen thrusters and we'll see them spurting out their cold gases soon to help flip the Starship over. But that white gas at the bottom is just a vent and doesn't provide any significant amount of thrust in any direction. Future Starship designs will have hot gas thrusters and the thrust will be much more powerful than what you're about to see here. Getting closer and closer to its apogee, which is about 8 miles or 12 and a half kilometers in altitude, you can tell how much thinner the air is up here by how much more the exhaust diameter has expanded. Now as we get near the highest point in the flight, you can see a new vent coming out of the right side of the vehicle and more venting that's pooling white gas in the engine bay. We've now reached apogee and the aft flaps pull back and with the help of bursts of RCS cold gas thrusters coming from the nose of the Starship, it begins to flip its whole body around so that it can fall belly first in a controlled skydiver stance. It controls itself into the perfect position 
so that it can fall exactly like a skydiver really does, using its forward flaps as a skydiver with their arms, and its rear flaps as a skydiver with their legs. Not only do the flaps help the Starship control its rate of descent, so it doesn't fall too quickly, the Starship can also aim itself by adjusting the flaps up and down in different combinations. During this flight, the Starship did travel out over the water and is now making its way back in towards the landing and launch site in the SpaceX facility at Boca Chica, Texas. The bottom right camera has now switched to a view of one of the forward flaps, so we can see how they work together to control the Starship. In the main view, you can now see that the Starship's nose also has a ring of frost, a very small one, but that's because there's a relatively smaller tank of super cold liquid oxygen in the tip of the nose that's called a header tank. The whole point of the header tanks, of which there are two on the Starship, is so that the engines can now switch over and draw on full tanks that don't have to worry about propellant sloshing around and not feeding into the lines when they kick on for the final maneuver. When the final maneuver comes up, what actually happened was that there wasn't enough pressure in the header tanks to feed enough fuel into the engines, so you'll see some of the propellant that they spit out is green because the engines are actually burning themselves. As the Starship passes through this cloud, it gets ready for its final maneuver, where it'll kick itself around and try to land gracefully like a cat. You can see the engines gimbling and getting ready to fire up, and two of them fire up as planned, but because of the low pressure from the header tanks, there wasn't enough propellant feeding into those engines, and one kicks off and the other starts burning itself and spitting out green exhaust, and the Starship touches the ground at a velocity higher than zero. So in conclusion, almost all objectives were completed and executed gracefully and beautifully, except for the velocity at landing. As the camera zooms out here, you can see the test article Starhopper on the right side that's basically a front yard ornament at the SpaceX launch and landing test site. To the right of Starhopper, you can see where serial number 8 took off from, and that's where soon we'll see serial number 9 set up for more amazing test flight action. Here's another angle of the ending sequence that SpaceX provided, and at this point Starship is actually coming in at just the right velocity. Let's listen to the sound of the engines as they kick on, but keep in mind this microphone may have been a very small one, and we already know that the engines can sound way different than this when recorded with other equipment. Another thing to notice while we watch this is that you can clearly see that there's now frost all over the belly of the Starship because the liquid propellant has settled into what is now the bottom of the tank as the Starship is sideways. As the Starship gets lower and lower and we get to see the nose, you can see that fully frosted header tank area of the nose, which unfortunately did not provide enough thrust for the Starship to decelerate sufficiently enough for a soft landing. It's pretty remarkable that the nose seemed to survive along with one of the forward flaps. Right away, SpaceX let everybody know that they'll be coming out with serial number 9 soon. Please like and hit subscribe if you want to see more videos on space exploration and the SpaceX Starship. Open your mind and reach for the stars.